Hey, so we're back with Fur Feathers and Ferns with Shack Day Camp. So excited to have our bears back today. We're doing requirements two and three and where we get to visit a wildlife center. So today we're gonna to learn about crocodiles, alligators, and tortoises. We're gonna to go to Mr. Kyle at the Crocodile Encounter in Angleton, Texas to learn about crocs and gators. So let's go ahead and see what they have to tell us. Hey, this is Mr. Kyle and I'm down here at uh, Crocodile Encounter with Jade. And today we're gonna to learn about crocodiles. Alligators. And alligators. Okay. Yeah. So we have crocodiles and alligators here. Um, number one, the most common question we get is, what is the difference between an alligator and crocodile? So behind us, we actually have the American alligator. These are young alligators. These are not full grown yet. American alligators can actually reach up to 12 feet long. The largest one recorded in Texas is a little bit over 14 feet. So that's record size. That was in the 60s. But again, average is 10 to 12 feet. Um, so again, this is the American alligator that you can find in Texas. Now crocodiles, we have a lot of different types of crocs here. We have crocodiles from Africa, we have crocodiles from Australia, crocodiles from India, crocodiles from the Philippines. Now our crocodiles, they all vary in size, but the largest reptile in the world is the saltwater crocodile. They're from Australia, they can get 24 feet long, so wow. huge, huge crocodiles. So that's almost twice the size of an alligator size. So again, crocodiles do get bigger. Crocodiles are faster, crocodiles are stronger than alligators. So crocodiles are a little more dangerous than the American alligator. Now, the biggest difference of just looking at them though is the snout. So alligators have nice rounded U-shaped jaws and crocodiles have narrow V-shaped jaws. So that is the biggest difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Perfect. Now just a minute ago, this young fellow right here had his mouth open. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that before with alligators. We'll just sit there with their mouths open. Why, why do they do that? So when an alligator or crocodile just sits there with their mouth open, that is called gaping. They are thermoregulating temperature. They actually, um, it's like a dog panting. So, you know, dogs don't sweat. So when they get hot, they start panting. Um, that's an alligator pretty much panting for you. So, and this alligator is probably what, about five feet long? Four and a half, five yeah, feet? Yeah, just about. How old is an alligator of that size? So all of the alligators in this pen here are all about five to eight years old. So they're young. Um, once they get a little bit bigger and a little bit older, they actually go into our bigger pond. So right now this is a holding pond. Uh, you can see that their pond is uh, not dug out in the ground yet. Um, but the guys, uh, once they get bigger, they'll go with the bigger guys behind us. Um, so these guys, again, five to eight years old. They can live to be a hundred years old average lifespan is 50 to 70 so an alligator and crocodile can live as long as you wow i did not know that now you've got a bucket there yes uh what uh, what do alligators eat well alligators will really eat any type of meat um we give them raw chicken pork beef rabbit duck deer fish really anything uh so they, they eat well <laughs> yes they do but uh what i have in my bucket today are pellets uh, these are dried pellets. It's dried meat. It's like dog food for alligators. We actually get this made uh, for our crocodiles and alligators. So it's chicken, pork, and fish. It's nice and hard. It makes their teeth strong, their jaw strong, and these guys love it. We call it the croc chow. Um, so once you toss it in, uh, you can see that these guys will, oh, hopefully they don't, they're going to fight for that one. But uh, these uh, guys love the truck chow. Again, it's just dried meat and uh, they eat these. But again, we do give them the raw meat as well. The crock chow is kind of like a treat for them. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well that was really fascinating. I'm glad that we got to, to hear about crocodiles and alligators. Do you see the alligator in the water in this picture? Alligators are only native to the United States and China. So those are the only places that you can find them in the wild. So the alligator versus croc. So you heard um, the explanation that uh, Miss Jade gave us. So crocodiles have more of a pointy V-shaped snout and alligators have more of the U-shaped snout. So that's how we can tell the difference between the two. I wonder if there are any other differences. Maybe we'll find out later. But do you see this um, crocodile sitting here with his um, mouth open? That's what she was talking about, the gaping. So he must be really hot, right? So he's letting off heat uh, with his mouth. And crocodiles are native to Africa, Asia, Australia, and the tropics, tropics of the Americas. Uh, so between North and South America. So they all live in the tropics.
Now, so we're going to go ahead and look at the, um, find out about the Aldabra tortoise from Miss Jane and Mr. Kyle. So let's go ahead and hear all about these special animals. All right. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Kyle again, and we're going to take a break from the crocodiles and the alligators for a second, and we're going to learn about tortoises. Jay, tell me about what kind of tortoise is this? This guy right here, uh, we actually have four of these. These are Aldabra tortoises. Aldabra tortoises are on an island off of Madagascar called the Seychelles Island. There's not too many of these guys, so a lot of people hear about the Galapagos tortoises, but a lot of people don't know what an Aldabra tortoise is. Actually, believe it or not, Galapagos and Aldabras get about the same size. They are the largest tortoises in the world. They can get up to 500 pounds. So this guy here is only eight years old. He again uh, can get up to 500 pounds. When he's 500 pounds, he can actually live up to 175 years old. These are very, very long living tortoises. Galapagos, Aldabras, of both again can live 175 years up, up to all the way up to 200 years, oh, which is insane. Goodness. Now, right now, I am throwing them out carrots. Uh, they eat all kinds of veggies. They love carrots, green beans. They eat corn. Um, we have a little tortoise chow for them as well. So in tortoises, just for some of the, the younger scouts, um, I've always known tortoises to live on the land and turtles to live on the water. What is the difference between, other than that, a tortoise and a turtle? Tortoise, and, tortoise a and the turtle. Yeah, that's mainly the main difference. So again, tortoises are big land dwellers. They usually have bigger, heavier shells, so they're not designed to swim around in the water. This tortoise is never going to duck down underwater and try to catch a fish or anything like that. His shell's too heavy. Um, it's not designed to do that. So again, they do live on land. Now the aquatic turtles are going to be more flat. Um, they're way better at swimming, getting through the water streams. Uh, so you're going to see a big, big difference in their shells. So again, once they live on land, their shells are usually more dome. Okay. Dome actually holds more pressure, more weight, um, very, very strong shells. Oh, also, you can see he's standing up when I touch his shell. A lot of people don't know that these guys can feel through their shell. Every tap on this guy's shell, he feels all of that, and he's just standing up higher and higher and higher. What it feels like when I'm touching this tortoise's shell, rub your knee. When you rub your knee, that's actually about the same sensation that this guy gets on his shell. We have about the same number of nerve endings and our kneecaps that these guys have in their shell. So um, this top part of his shell is a carapace. The bottom is a plastron, but this is his spine and ribs connected together. So one of the main questions I get over any turtle and tortoise is can they leave their shell? And no, they cannot. So their shell is their spine and ribs. We don't leave our spine and ribs. He's not gonna leave his spine or ribs either. You wanna try to feed him a carrot? Sure, just throw it in front of him. Or you can try to hand feed him. Okay, here we go. There we go. You want it? You want it? He might have been enjoying the scratches a little too much. He really liked that. So I've so noticed you can scratch they're, them on they're, the back too. They're, uh, they're, they've got more like claws, right? Mm -hmm. So, and turtles have a webbed foot, right? Yeah. So is that is that another difference between Big difference. So the web feet, of course, help any animal swim, move through the water. These guys are going to have actually, again, like toes and claws, and this helps them dig burrows. Um, so some of our guys are still underground. They dig these little caves. Um, we have two up, and the other two are still in their caves sleeping. So they will dig these little burrows or caves to sleep in or just hang out in, um, and then they'll come out in the morning. So, of course, eat some veggies, um, some grass, and then they go back in their caves at night. So they do dig these little caves or burrows that they like to sleep in or hang out in. Perfect. Now, are they... So I know like alligators, right? Don't they almost hibernate when it gets cold? They burrow in the mud. Do yes. tortoises do that too? Yes. Uh, so any reptile species, it's going to go through a brumation when it gets cold. So it's like a hibernation. They're technically not sleeping like bears and squirrels. Um, they're still awake like our alligators and crocodiles. They are still awake and moving, uh, but they just move really, really little and they don't eat at all. Okay. So um, they try to uh, preserve as much energy as they can since they're not getting much energy from the sun because that alligator or any reptile this tortoise they have to heat up in the sun just imagine them as like a battery um, the sun is what charges them so they can eat and move if they don't have the sun they can't eat and they can't move so they literally just stay really still they don't waste any energy until the sun comes back out again so that happens every winter with all of our reptiles okay he's looking for some more here you go buddy 
Yummy. There we go. Good job, Mr. Tortoise. So will we thank you uh, for talking to us about tortoises. Can we go check out some crocodiles? Sure thing. Let's do it. Awesome. Great. So I hope you learned something about those tortoises, but now I want to tell you the sad story of Mr. George, the uh, tortoise. So George is the last Pinta Island tortoise. He's an extinct animal now. The Pinta Island tortoises were sadly um, uh, cousins um, of the Galapagos uh, tortoises also. And the Pinta Island tortoise went extinct in 1970. Prior to human introduction, the tortoise thrived in its native island as part of the Galapagos Island chain. Unfortunately, humans brought rats on their boats that attacked the tortoise and humans also ate them for meat. So the humans definitely left a trace and the tortoises are no more. So can you see why it's so important that in our daily habits that we leave no trace? Here's the picture of George, the last Pinta Island tortoise. So alligators and crocodiles are car carnivores. And as the picture says, carnivores are organisms that eat meat. So I didn't understand why we had crocodiles in Texas. Let's find out more about these Texas crocodiles. Hey everybody, Mr. Kyle again. We're now in the croc barn over here at Crocodile Encounter of Wajay. And these little guys are actually not alligators. These are crocodiles. Now, Jay, my, my question is, I, I, I didn't realize that we had crocodiles in Texas. Yeah, actually, we do not have any crocodiles in Texas. If you look at the range map here, these types of crocodiles are from all throughout Africa and even on the side of Madagascar here. These are the Nile crocodiles. Now, Nile crocodiles are the second largest croc in the world, reaching up 15 to 20 feet long at 2,000 pounds, which is incredible because I told you guys earlier the American alligator gets about 10 to 12 feet, usually maxing out about 800 pounds, where these guys, again, double the size and get double the weight as well. So very, very dangerous crocodiles. Um, working with alligators is actually pretty safe out here. We have our alligators trained uh, pretty well. Uh, crocodiles, they train as well. Very smart animals, but they are very dangerous because they eat big predators off the land. So, of course, these little guys won't eat any big predators yet, but 15 to 20 feet, they're going to be eating wildebeest, zebras, lions, hippos, smaller giraffes. These are very dangerous crocodiles in Africa because they hunt animals from the land and yank them in the water. Where, again, alligators, they mainly eat, like, fish and turtles, so they're not big uh, land eaters where these guys are. So very, very dangerous crocs. Well, I can definitely tell now that we're over here when you mentioned that the alligators have a rounded snout. These guys definitely have more of a pointed um, snout. So it's pretty obvious now looking at the difference um, that those are crocodiles versus alligator. Is there, is there any other thing that you would look at? To tell the difference? Oh yeah, so again, the crocodile and alligator biggest difference is the snout. Alligators again rounded, crocodiles have pointy, but also the colors are different. Um, alligators as adults are very dark. Our mud here is very dark, so they blend into our mud and dirt well. Um, these guys are more yellowish, kind of golden. Our adults are really, really golden outside, so uh, these will lighten up as they get older and older. Where our alligators, they start off pretty light. They have some yellow stripes in them. As they get older, they actually get darker, so it's kind of opposite in the croc and alligator world. Uh, crocs uh, usually have heavier body, heavier bodies than alligators. Um, they have actually a few more layers of osteoderms on their back. So uh, all these little bumps on the back of a crocodile or alligator is protection for them uh, from other crocodiles, from prey when they take down prey. Um, but crocodiles, again, have more layers of protection on them than alligators because they do get bigger. They have larger predators. Um, and um, they also have larger prey size that might fall on them or step on them while they're attacking them. So these guys are heavy, heavy armored crocs, very gnarly. Everybody knows not to mess with the Nile crocodile. Okay. Now, and, and they go underwater. Mm -hmm. How long can an alligator and crocodile hold their breath while they're underwater? So typically they're going to go underwater 15 to 30 minutes. Um, they might duck up and down while they swim, but uh, if they, if you walk up on one and you kind of scare it, it's going to duck down underwater again, usually 15 to 30 minutes. Now when it gets cold, we were talking about brumation earlier and how um, when it comes to winter, they don't eat much or move much. So during winter, they'll come up, take a breath, and they go down from three to four hours. So they can hold their breath a lot longer. Um, when it's cold again, they don't use as much energy. They stop their blood 
flow to almost a halt. Uh, it's really incredible, uh, again, how, how much these guys don't move during winter. There they oh go. Fish, they're fast, aren't they? Yes, very fast crocodiles. So they're fast on land, they're fast in the water. On land, they can run up to 15 miles an hour. In the water, they can swim up to 30 miles per hour. So you can't out swim them? No. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jade, so much for You're showing us uh, alligators, crocodiles, and tortoises. This is Mr. Collar, everybody. Y'all have a good one. Bye, guys. Now, we hope you enjoyed your visit to the Crocodile Encounter with Mr. Kyle and Miss Jade. I sure learned a lot. If you'd like to tell us more about what you learned, um, to, uh, you can definitely send us an email to thunderwolfvirtualscouting at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to reply. So hope you had a great time today and we'll see you at the next adventure.